So if you haven't been um, living underneath a rock going on three years, you'll notice that a lot of stores are closing, a lot of like businesses are struggling. So you know, instead of helping those businesses, what do we do? We 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 exploit the situation even further and make it even worse. Um, so I want to highlight this new thing. I don't know if you've seen oh, this around. Oh, there's another thing that we yeah. do. Yeah. There's one more thing that we do. You forgot what we do. We place all the blame on the people with no power. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. your fault, teachers. It's your fault, construction worker. Um, so this is new thing going around. I don't know if you heard about this, Doctor Eugene. Everyone knows about like kind of like Fresh Direct and like kind of like Amazon. That's kind of cool, like getting your groceries delivered. That's cool. So it's actually going to another level of like kind of like almost like bodega delivery services. Almost like you get your food within 15 minutes. So I want to put this up real quick and guys, check this out. Um, this oh, is new kind wow. Of this is nefarious. Yeah. These venture capital are going to kill your neighborhood convenience stores. Can you hear this, guys? Since the pandemic forced people into lockdown. New York, London, and Berlin have been flooded with rapid grocery services like Get Here, Gorillas, and GoPuff. They operate from so called dark stores, small warehouses in cheap locations away from the high street. A promise to deliver a six pack of beer, bag of Doritos, or a raw steak to your front door for as little as 10 minutes after you order from their app. But is this just another case of venture capitalists putting billions into businesses? That There's actually one of these places around the corner from my house. That's why like, I'm bringing this up. It's getting too close to home. So I want to I wanna see what the fuck is going on. Um, Never going to turn a meaningful profit. Giles Thorne, an equity analyst with Jefferies, took an innovative approach. He looks mad concerned. He's previously worked as a courier for Uber. Yeah, his hairline looks concerned too. How their business. <laughs> this time, he and his team set up camp outside a Getir dark store in London and set about counting how many orders it got. The idea was if you turned up at a dark store because all orders are being fulfilled from a single spot, you just need to go to that spot and count the number of people on bikes cycling out with backpacks on to have a pretty good idea that, that remember these are low skilled workers um you know that's that's what we hear nowadays about these people as a proxy for an order <laughs> and if you spend enough time if you spend a day if you spent a week you can actually build a pretty robust view of what the daily order count was and getty was getting a lot more orders than he expected just six months after opening the store oh, yeah, they're trying to sell that shit super hard Depending on the size of each order, each store could therefore conservatively be making between $4 million and $6 million a year in revenue, he estimates. That could be even more if basket sizes are bigger. We know from some of the commentary out of the private operators, the pure play dance store private operators, that basket sizes are comfortably north of 20 euros and trending towards 30 euros. That let him estimate that an established dark store can make an operating profit that represents between 5% and 10% of sales. That compares favorably with convenience stores, which typically enjoy a profit margin of between 2% and 4%. The model can be more profitable because it has some lower costs. It doesn't need premium real estate locations to attract the passing customer, so rent is cheaper. And each store can cover quite a wide area of around 11 square kilometers, so you need fewer locations. But setting up does require a lot of money at least $1.4 million per store, according to Thorne. The last generation of rapid growth consumer investments were platforms, three-sided marketplaces like- Wow, this guy is moving so fast, like his life depends on it. Oh, hell no, he saw yeah, so that. In theory, it's a business model that doesn't require much investment because you're acting as little more than a catalyst. But in reality, the low barriers to entry have made competition tough. Deliveroo? Oh my God. If you're a dark grocery <laughs> operator, you're really only competing for the customer. If you're Uber Eats or Deliveroo, you're competing on three fronts for the customer. Wait, wait, wait. go back 15 seconds. Couriers, all of whom might find a better deal with one of you. What happened? Does that say pimps and pinups? Oh shit! That's what I thought I saw, son. Look at that! Look, look, look. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Remember, he said that. Remember, he said that. Remember, he said that. These, these. Look, these, like, look. These... It's right there for you. <laughs> They're not even trying to hide it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the pimp? <laughs> for the customer, Uber Eats or Deliveroo, you're competing on three fronts for the customer for the best restaurants and for couriers, all of whom might find a better deal with one of your rivals. The initial outlay for dark stores is higher, but once it's up and running, it should be more efficient. 
Firstly, these companies are burning money on marketing to attract new customers. That's fine for now. They've raised $3 billion from investors this year alone as venture capitalists determined that they- See, I'm tired of seeing this shit because they say, we raised three, four billion dollars. How much are you paying people then? Are people seeing this thousands of dollars? Are people seeing this money? The people in the couriers, the, the fucking guy, you saw that footage of that guy running through the aisle, picking shit up through the refrigerator. Is he seeing any of this $3 billion? Is he seeing that money? You know what's really crazy? That Do you see how fast that guy was moving? Yeah. He's working harder than these people that, that make all the profits. He works harder than they do. <laughs> right? But he doesn't deserve any kind of compensation for how hard he works. And here, and here's the thing, man. And, you know, I'm sitting here watching this and I'm, I'm analyzing it. You know, I... You, if you guys follow me on social media, I don't recommend that, you know, certain people with certain beliefs don't follow me at, at DR underscore evil underscore genius. I'm going to say some things that you're going to disagree with. And there's a sizable part of the part of the population who cannot handle people that disagree with them. But one of the things that you'll find me doing more often than not is having these arguments, these debates with people who keep using terms like low skill and minimum wage is for starting off, right? When FDR signed that, uh, that economic policy in the law in the mid 1930s, he said nothing about, you know, minimum wage is the starting off point. He said, minimum wage should be a living wage, not just for subsistence, but a comfortable living. That's what he said when you when you uh, signed that law, when you signed that legislation into law, right? So they were thinking when, about when mortgages. You, they weren't thinking about rent. They were thinking about mortgages, paying a mortgage. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, also, you know the you know it even adjusted for twenty twenty two dollars. Uh, the the mortgages were many thousands of times less than they are today. Okay, so. When we're talking about a living wage, we're talking about something that should move with the different elements of inflation that hits the market. But when you when you talk to these people and they say, well, they don't deserve to be compensated because they're low skill. And then it hits me. Right. Let's say you have your classical skilled worker. You have already heard the trope, learn the code and all of that. Right. Yeah. Let's say you got a guy working in software. Right. This guy would normally have to leave his office because we're talking about grocery delivery. Let's just take grocery delivery. We're not talking about dry cleaning. We're not talking about anything else. Let's just talk about grocery delivery right now. This is like a bag of Doritos in the black and mild. This is like, this is like, no, but they can get bigger baskets efficient. and the bigger the yeah, baskets yeah. that the person orders, the more profit that these venture capitalist companies make. Right? Yeah, so yeah. let's say that you're not part of the venture capitalist crew. Cause most of the people arguing with me are broke as fuck arguing, keeping <laughs> for the rich people, they're broke as fuck, okay? <laughs> now, when you look at their argument, it's like, okay, you wanna say that the low skill worker doesn't deserve to be comp uh, compensated, right? Okay, well, let's take your classically skilled worker, right? That classically skilled worker does not have to leave his desk to get his food. He does not have to leave his home to do the things he would normally have to do. He would have to allocate time to make sure that he could clean his clothes and pick up his dry cleaning and clean his house and do all of these things. Now he's got apps to do all the things in life that he would normally have to do himself, freeing him up to make more money at their job. Now this person did not gain any more skill, but they're now making heaps more money because they have that convenience. Why the fuck do we have these arguments against paying the people that provide the convenience to, to help you make a substantial more amount of money without you actually getting new skills? Because that's what it's supposed to be about, right? You're supposed to, well, if you're, if you're uh, competent, then you get compensated. Well, you're getting compensated more, but you didn't up your competency you just offloaded your responsibilities off to other people, but they shouldn't be comp compensated because of the skill level where your skill level didn't rise. And, and then think about it and also think about even further about, you know, the idea that time is money. You know, the fact that you have to work so much that you don't have time to do shit for yourself. We hear that all the time, right? Time is yeah, money. Time is money, right? Yeah, but what about this motherfucker's time? 
Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. But, but the thing is, you want this guy to get on a bike, right, from a homeless encampment somewhere. Because <laughs> if we, as we've already keep noting, four out of every 10 employed people, uh, four out of every 10 homeless people are employed. How do you expect this person to do this work that you refuse to do for yourself if they don't have enough money to get back to work the next day? But that doesn't matter to you, right? As long as everything is super cheap. Well, this is what happens when everything is is, is super cheap for you. Yeah. Right? You don't mm-hmm. have uh you don't have a, a large group of people with buying power. So they buy less things. That means your company has a smaller customer base, which means eventually your profit margins are going to fall. Your revenue is going to fall because you have no customers because you believe that anybody with a job that pays anywhere near less than you, than than what you get, that none of those people need to be compensated. Only people on your level and above because that's where you're looking. You're looking above. But fuck everybody at the bottom, even though they are the reason you are where you are. And, and think about it. Like the top, when you talk about people who make real money, not people who just caping for people with real money. Those people actually have time to do stuff. They actually have time to lay around and do things. The fact that you don't have time. still have motherfuckers doing it for them. Yeah, the fact that, the, but you're doing it because you don't have the time. You don't have the time for that shit. So yeah. So people don't understand that, you know, rich people, they have all the time in the world and they still have people doing shit for them. You don't have the time because you have to work for the hours. You know, you have to work for those hours, you know. So yeah. That just shows you that the, the wages are not good. The wages are not good if that's happening for everybody across the spectrum. So except for the top, top point zero zero one who can just hang out and fucking take pictures in bad T-shirts and stuff like that. Right, but the reason why we're not part of the 0.00001% is because we're lazy and we don't want to work. I mean, we're the <laughs> most productive. We're the most productive Americans um, by uh, by any metric. We're the most productive Americans since the inception of the country. Uh, but yeah. we're lazy and don't want to work. That that's what it Think is. It's that. socialism. It's communism. It's free handouts. We want to get paid for your work. And think about that. The the people that were building planes and shit, the bomb Nazis and stuff like that, they had more time than we do. You know, <laughs> so like you know, like what the fuck is up with that? You know, so pandemic induced lockdowns were accelerating e-commerce trends, but it's clearly not sustainable for a city like. London Sounds like looting. A dozen different ultra fast delivery companies. We're stage, profiting because the pandemic sounds like looting. By their rivals. Finally, and perhaps most significantly, will the growth trend survive the lockdowns? When people are working from home, they can place dark store orders throughout the day. But if they return to the office and orders become concentrated in the evenings, the business case may not add up as readily. Besides, it's easier for commuters to pop into the corner store on their way home. I like how they show some lonely ass nigga ordering Chinese food. Um, one of the things that one of the things that he's missing. Hold on. One of the things that he's missing. So so he's saying that you know when people go back to the office, it's just easy for them to pop into the corner store. No, he says it's easier. Yeah. But let me but let me pose this to you. You're in the office, right? You know that you have to stop at the store and pick up such and such items. But instead of doing that, while you're at work. You thumb through, you choose what you need and have it delivered by the time you're ready to get off of work. That does sound easier to me than actually stopping because that's extra time because these motherfuckers don't sleep. Right. Especially if you're talking about people in tech. Right. They don't really have a lot of time. You get to shave off, you know, 15 to 30 minutes off of your going home routine by having the stuff delivered to the office before you ever leave. Or yeah, think, that shit is sitting outside your door away. of your apartment when you get there. But I did. But but I, when I walked past the, the weird 15 minute um, delivery place near my house, all, all the delivery guys is kind of sitting around on their phones. So uh, we see. Yeah, waiting for the next order. <laughs> yeah, they're waiting for the next order. They're like this. They're like bored of shit. You know, like, you know, not so, getting paid. Yeah. Now they're at work, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> but they're not being paid supermarkets and venture capitalists alike will continue to pile into the space and the ensuing price war will mean it ceases to be an attractive business. It'll be good for the consumer, but your local bodega might find that its lunch is being eaten by someone else. 
This is Alex Webb for Bloomberg Quick Take from London. You know what's really funny? It's really funny because I just got into a bait with with somebody and he's crying about how these restaurants are failing and all these local businesses are failing because people keep asking for the minimum wage to rise. But what he's what he's what 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 he's not understanding is the reason why the restaurants are, are failing because it used having a restaurant, especially here in New York City, having a restaurant yeah. used to be something where if you had a cool food idea, you were going to make money. Yeah. But but then McDonald's happened and Wendy's and Taco Bell and 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 Starbucks. These areas suck the business away from the this is one of the yeah, reasons then, why i always have, tell and people then, and then you have the higher tier stuff like sweet greens you have like di- the dig you have like those kind of higher grade like they're still franchises but they're like yeah. considered more hip and like healthier right know, but but they're still like franchise they're still yeah. franchises and what and the thing about franchises which is why if you have Amazon coming to your city, you need to be voting against it. If you have Walmart trying to edge its way into your town, you need to do everything you can to keep them away. Here's why. When Walmart undercuts your local businesses, it removes their ability to pay a living wage because they're undercutting you because they can afford to take a loss in your small town. They can yeah. afford to take that loss because they're making profits in all the other towns that they already took over. So and then they somehow, get rid of and then somehow the mom and pop business. Working, and then somehow people are working on welfare, even though they're working full time, they're on welfare. No, we're going to get to that in a second because yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's an intentional scam. Yeah. But, the, but, the thing, but the thing is, is that the, what they do is they undercut your mom and pop business so that the mom and pop can't stay in business. In fact, it'll be you plus the mom and pop that are working for peanuts at that Walmart. And then they jack up the price because there's no competition. And here's the worst part of it. All that money goes to the Waltons, one of the richest families on planet Earth. That money does not stay in your community. That money exits the community. And they have every trick in the book to make sure that they don't pay taxes. Yo, that money goes to Bermuda. And I'm already, I'm already out of there. That money yeah, that out shit, of the country. Yo, that money, your money disappeared <laughs> into the Bermuda Triangle. Okay? <laughs> Now, <laughs> instead of the mom and pop businesses and you got a, an actual local economy, you're having money being siphoned out of your neighborhoods. And now That's instead of you working for your mom and pop that you know and trust and they know and trust you, both of you are now greeters at Walmart getting paid next to nothing. And do you know why they're able to do that? Because they figure, you know what? We can we can actually get more profit, but our Employees don't have to suffer completely because if we only pay them just enough, they can still qualify for public assistance. So the (laughs) government is going to subsidize the wages, right? So the taxpayers are paying them to bring us our profit. And the same government that refuses to raise the minimum wage. Isn't that crazy? You know, the same government that you have to go to for for welfare, for for rental assistance, it doesn't it doesn't want to raise the minimum wage. So it's a whole crazy like circle jerk that's happening. But 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 the prices are raising because the minimum wage keeps going up. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, Yeah, the prices were going up when the wages weren't going up. So like rent, rent, rent has been going up. No one complains about inflation when rent is going up. But that's gonna be our next segment. We're gonna talk do you, about do you know what shrinkflation is? <laughs> shrinkflation. Yeah, you ever heard of that? Oh yeah, yeah. Explain. Yeah. All right. So, so shrinkflation is a trick that uh, goods providers uh, play to raise prices without people actually seeing the number of the price go up. So, for yeah. example, when I was a kid, a half gallon of orange juice was a half a gallon. How much is a half a gallon? It's 64 ounces, right? But then you start to see from 64 ounces to 62 to 59 to 58 to 54 ounces. Now, the cartons are just, you know, 9% smaller. That's that's like a bag. That's like you get a bag of potato chips and has like three chips in it. Compared to when I was a kid, when it had had six chips in it. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Right? So... What they do is they will lower the weight by content 
but keep the actual price the same so that the price per ounce goes up, but you may not realize that you're getting less in the package. I've seen people do comparisons of Toblerones. If you look at Toblerone from like That's 10, 15 fancy. years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. And you see the ridges that you in the Toblerone. So yeah. before it used to kind of be like, you know, you know. Yeah. Right? Like if like the pack could go on forever. You know? or, right. Or or yeah. like the ridges, it would kind of look like Bitcoin's price, you know? Yeah, yeah. But now you got, I don't know, like you get one peak and it comes down and then yeah. it stays down for a long time. And then the next one <laughs> and then it peaks, right? So the, the size of the packaging is the same. The total length of the chocolate looks about the same. But because they space out the, the, the parts that you break off, they are not putting as mu they're not putting as much chocolate in the in the wrapper. Yeah. Right. So they're playing that, weird why, tricks with why, you. That's but why, they're raising that's the price the, on you. But you don't that's know. Why it. I gotta, that's why I got to end with the catalog. That's what made the catalog thing so absurd. That's why those workers were tight. They're like, no way. No way you're going to do that shit to us. We're going to walk the fuck out and never come back. You know, yeah. <laughs> so, Cause we yeah. know what's we know what's up in catalogs. You know yeah. those Rice Krispies way more, way more air in those Rice Krispies now than they were twenty years ago. So, yeah, uh, and, and of course you know they wanted to shrinkflate the yeah. uh, the the compensation for the people responsible for their record profits, but not only by quarter but also year over year. You pay your employees by taking their rights and, and their and their yeah. uh, their good working conditions away yeah. from them. You take their pension from them. You tell them that the next person that comes up behind them is going to be a third class citizen compared to them to create enmity and strife yeah. within your work environment so that you can break the union down, right? That's how you pay the people that have generated your 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 profits. And when the customers complain about how you're treating your employees, what do you do? On the box of pop tarts, you take the word Kellogg's off the packaging. <laughs> like where are these pop tarts come from? I don't know where the pop like oh, like we that stupid, yo. Yeah. <laughs> like, we just wanted here? you to focus on the pop tarts. Yeah, nigga, we know why. We know why you <laughs> want us to focus on the pop tarts. Because when you put your name on it, you know we're not going to buy it. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I even tweeted at these motherfuckers. I'm like, yo, I love Kashi, but I don't love it that much. Yeah, I, I get You that. replace those, those 1,400 employees, you replace them, you'll have to replace me as a customer. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and that's what, I think that's what scared them. That's why they're like, okay, okay, we can be stingy motherfuckers. So th that's some future stuff. So but watch how out. Do you, how, do you, how do you repay your employees for all the money they made you by taking a dookie on them. <laughs> Even in the future, in the future, the stuff is still going to be trying to exploit us. Yeah, with the fort we have the 15 minute 15 minute delivery. That's the next thing we gotta keep an eye on because you saw that guy rushing do the nigga didn't even take his jacket bash. off. You saw that shit, he didn't even take his jacket off. He had his jacket on like, like yep. Yo, what yep. kind of what kind of job you got? You can't even take your jacket off. Yep. But, I mean, you want to talk about dash and bass. Did you see yeah. that low skill worker dashing at somebody else's convenience? Yeah. I mean, if this is not a dystopian future that we that we are entering into or have already entered into by by virtue of the Rona, holy shit, man. So that's some future stuff for Black Power Magic Guy. You can follow us on Twitter. Uh, we were always live there, Twitch. Um, Discord and Dr. Regis, he's talking shit on um, Discord, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. And TV. I'm streaming video games again. Dr. Yeah. Evil Genius, YouTube, Twitch, Discord, and that's some future stuff.